our oligarch president has demonstrated numerous times that he doesn't just not care about the poor, but he actually has contempt for the poor. And the reason why I say that is because if you follow his actions, his actions dictate that he absolutely hates poor people. He believes in this old conservative notion that if you're poor, then simply just stop being poor. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps, peasant. Uh, I'm not poor. Big league. And this story that I got for you, I think, further demonstrates his hatred of the poor. Because as Mike Dorning of Bloomberg reports, the Trump administration is moving to end food stamp benefits for 3 million people with proposed new regulations curtailing the leeway of states to automatically enroll residents who receive welfare benefits. Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue said state governments have misused this flexibility. We are changing the rules, preventing abuse of a critical safety net system so those who need food assistance the most are the only ones who receive it, he added. The Trump administration rule would rein in states' ability to enroll recipients earning more than 130% of the federal poverty guidelines, in most cases capping eligibility to an annual income of $32,640 for a family of four. 40 states and the District of Columbia currently use alternative alternative eligibility criteria that allow participants in some federally funded welfare programs to automatically receive food stamps as long as their income is less than double the poverty level. Brandon Lips, an acting deputy undersecretary in the Agriculture Department, told reporters in a conference call previewing the regulatory changes that in some cases states enroll residents for food stamps even though they are receiving federal welfare benefits of minimal value, including brochures. The proposed regulations to be released Tuesday would only allow automatic enrollment of people who receive welfare benefits worth at least $50 a month on an ongoing basis for at least six months. Other than cash, the only welfare benefits that would qualify are subsidized employment, work support such as transportation, and child care, Lips said. The proposed restrictions would eliminate food stamps for 3 million people at an average annual savings of 2.5 billion, Lips said. A final regulation will be issued after a 60-day public comment period. Now, that last paragraph there really said everything that you need to know about this. They would be saving $2.5 billion. That's it. But in exchange for that saving, 3 million people would go hungry. Or if they don't go hungry... They would at least struggle to put food on the table more so than they already probably do. It would give them more food insecurity, and it's $2.5 billion. That's a lot of money, like it's an unfathomable amount to you and I, but when the majority of our discretionary budget goes towards the military, this is, this is nothing. So, to me, when I hear this and I see, you know... The same justification, oh, well, you know, something, something, budget, something, something, waste, fraud, and abuse. They are choosing what they're prioritizing. They are saying, look, because there's some instances of waste, fraud, and abuse, and because, you know, we need to save every nickel we can possibly find, three million people should go hungry. And think about this. If you make more than $32,000 per year, uh, or no more than 32640 per year and you're a family of four, you're making too much money to qualify. $32,640 for a family of four. Sorry, you're making too much. No food stamps for you. Your money that you're paying out of every check, the tax dollars that you're giving us, that's better used to kill people in the Middle East and North Africa. Sorry. I mean, if you are single... Living off of $32,000 per year isn't going to make your life super easy, but a family of four? To suggest that that's too much to receive food stamps is utterly absurd to me. Now, I want to get to some numbers here, because when you look at the total cost of the SNAP program, um, <laughs> it's just it's such a minuscule portion of our budget that if I'm looking to cut anything in government, this would be the last place that I look. And furthermore, if they're saying that, you know, there's too much waste, fraud, and abuse, 
then let's look at the actual numbers. And when I say fraud with regard to food stamps, what they essentially mean is if you are taking your food stamps and you're selling it for cash or you are reporting that you're making less than you are in actuality so you continue to qualify. So let's look at some of the numbers here and see if it's actually reasonable to cut 3 million people off of this program. The total cost of the SNAP benefits dispersed in 2016 was 665 billion, down from 74.6 billion in 2012. Those are significant figures because America is a big country. When compared with those total figures, the fraud identified in 2016 amounted to a mere 0.9% of the total. That was up from 0.5% in 2012. In other words, less than 1% of all SNAP recipients are committing fraud, and furthermore, the entire cost of the SNAP program yearly is less than the increase in military spending. We just gave them $80 billion more. That's more than the yearly SNAP budget. See, we have to cut this program that feeds people in order to funnel more money towards our defense budget because we need to be killing people. That's what we prioritize. We'd rather kill people abroad than feed our own citizens. That's why when I say that Donald Trump hates poor people, I don't think that's hyperbole. His actions dictate that he doesn't give a flying fuck about people who are less fortunate because why would he? He has never, once in his life, experienced austerity. He's never experienced the struggle of paying rent, living paycheck to paycheck, putting food on the table. Fuck, he's never experienced working. Being president is basically the only job that he's had. So why would he care about people who are alien to him? He doesn't know what it's like to be poor. And sure, you know, there was that faux populist rhetoric where he campaigned as someone who was going to make sure that, you know, he's looking out for the forgotten in this country. Doesn't look like he's doing that. So I get it if you were duped. Like, I, I don't really get it, but I can, I can rationalize, you know, your justification if you were duped the first time. But if you are still duped and you vote for him a second time, I don't know what to say. You're just too far gone. There's no hope for you. You've drunk in the Kool-Aid. How can you justify this and support Donald Trump, especially if you identify as an evangelical. How can you support this? I mean, people who vote Republican oftentimes are evangelical. How can you support a president and a party whose actions are antithetical to the teachings of Jesus Christ? This isn't my God. This is your God. You're not following your own rules if you support this. So, I mean, this is disgusting. Three million people will uh, go hungry because of Donald Trump or at least struggle to put food on the table. But in their view, oh, you know, they can go to food banks or charities can look out for them. It's not our problem. The tax dollars that they're giving us should be used to kill people, not feed people. That's more important because uh, America. America. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous, and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.